This is our final video in a series on exam technique. In this video, we look at how to answer and tackle extended mark questions. Most exam papers will have extended answer questions worth eight or more marks. Now don't get thrown by these questions. They're designed to test higher understanding and to provide you with an opportunity to really demonstrate your knowledge. In at least one extended question in each paper, the quality of your written communication, that spelling, punctuation, grammar and technical terms will be assessed. These questions are clearly marked. In OCR papers, they mark the questions with an asterisk and in AQA, they clearly state it in the question. We've come up with a four step process to help you tackle these extended questions. Step one, highlight the command words. Make sure you know what the command word means. Remember, command words are guides in the question which identify how the question should be answered. Our first video was all about command words. So here the command words discuss. That means give an account that addresses a range of ideas and arguments. Step two, highlight other parts of the question that are important. The question is asking you to talk about the effects on young people. So make sure to talk about this. However, check carefully. It's not that simple. You could still get sidetracked if your answer just becomes about the effects of the Internet on young people. This question is asking you to be more specific. You must isolate your answers to talking about the effects unrestricted access to the Internet has had on young people. So we've highlighted those parts of the question as well. Step three. If the question has a scenario, then identify it. Don't forget that your arguments and examples must directly relate to the scenario you are given and not just everything you know about a topic. The final thing to do with big questions is to try and split the question into multiple parts. This is often very easy to do. So if we look here, we can see there are actually two questions here, a discussion of the social effects and a discussion of the ethical effects. The examiner will expect you to divide your response equally between these two parts, so you can't focus too heavily on one over the other. This has now become two slightly less daunting four mark questions instead of one eight mark question. Now, this four step process in reality will only take you about a minute and it's well worth it in order to make sure you keep your answer focused and on track. So what have we ended up with? So in our head, we should now be seeing the following two questions. Give an account that addresses a range of ideas and arguments on the social effects on young people having unrestricted access to the Internet. And then the same question for four marks, but this time the ideas and arguments on the ethical effects. These are the same questions as were presented in the exam paper. However, it's now much easier to tackle. You're more likely to keep on point and to make sure you answer all aspects of the question without going off topic. We can actually even take this particular question one step further. Notice how each question asks you for the effects. Well, effects come in two forms. There are positive effects and negative effects. So what we've done now is split our eight mark question into four separate two mark questions. So, for example, we've got give an account that addresses a range of ideas and arguments on the positive social effects on young people having unrestricted access to the Internet. The next one would be the same question, but you're talking about the negative social effects and then the positive ethical effects and then the negative ethical effects. You can now create a writing frame to make it easier to answer all parts of the question. This will really help show the examiner you've understood the question and also make it so much easier for them to mark. 
it will also help focus you and keep you on point. Each of these are two mark questions, so make sure to make at least two valid points under each heading. Again, it's actually OK to use bullet points to help you split out your different points. You don't have to write in paragraphs. Just remember that some of these questions are marked on the quality of your written communication. So make sure to write in full sentences and check your spelling and your grammar. And finally, don't panic when you see these extended questions. Be confident. Take your time to break the question down. Make a writing frame. Address all the important keywords in the question. Use any appropriate subject specific terminology. Make sure you use examples and they relate to the question scenario. Be concise and don't repeat the question. Double check your spelling, punctuation and grammar and make sure your handwriting is easy to read. Thank you.